Got something a little bit different for y'all today. Going to be doing a review and demonstration on a gun that I've had for quite a while now. The Iwata LPH 400. So we're going to go over some of the key features of the gun. We're going to talk a little bit about the setup uh, and kind of how to use it. And then I'm also going to give you guys a score, like a rating of where I think it lands in relation to some of the other guns that are available on the market. Uh, but first I need to get my cheater valve because I cannot spray without that. These Walcom ones, favorite, hands down. I've actually got a Carbonio 360 HTE on the way. So be on the lookout for a review on that guy as well. All right, so first things first, I don't want to waste y'all's time with a bunch of like shots of me holding this in my hand and just talking and, you know, the basic gun review type BS. Um, I can show you guys kind of a few of the important details um, with just some stills here. And then we're just gonna hop right into spraying this bad boy so that we can get down to the nitty gritty and talk about what you actually came here for, right? All right, so first thing we're gonna be doing is putting on some wet on wet sealer. We're just trying to tint the, uh, the ground a little bit so that I'm not trying to spray black over gray. That way I'm spraying black over black and I don't have to use as much paint the first thing I wanted to talk about with this gun was just kind of the setup and then also how that relates to like the ease of use. So there's a lot of misconception, well, not misconception, but just there's so much information about this gun online that it makes it a little bit confusing for some people initially to get this thing set up. So from what I've gathered, there's essentially two trains of thought when it comes to how to set this gun up. So there's one school of thought that's just set your inlet pressure, right? And I wanted it 19. And then you can more or less leave the fan wide open or pretty close to that. So either like half turn or full turn in. And then obviously adjust your fluid wherever you feel comfortable or where you want it. I normally just leave it wide open. And when you set it up that way, I normally just do a half turn in. And when you set it up that way, you get a pretty decent sized pattern at about four inches off the panel. Right? So, this would be one of my main gripes with this gun in relation to ease of use. Because a lot of new painters and people who aren't super familiar with spray guns prefer a wider fan. It makes it a little bit easier to lay material on. It makes it a little bit less likely that you're gonna have any uh, application errors. Um, for someone like me, I don't really mind it. Um, at the end of the day, if you're doing 75% overlap and you have an eight inch pattern or you have you know, a 10 or 12 inch pattern, uh, you're not really changing your, the amount that you're actually uh, moving up on each pass very much. So the other school of thought, which is kind of interesting, I still leave the fluid wide open. And while you're pulled on the trigger, set your inlet where you want it. And then you're actually gonna spin the fan in until you see the pressure start to bump up a little bit. So you can see that it went from 19 to 19.5. So I'm gonna get to that point and then just turn it back a, a hair. And when you set it up that way, you still have the same size fan, but it actually dials in the fan sweep a little bit better. Generally speaking, um, this is, you can see it, it tapers it in a little bit, but barely any. It does help keep the overspray on the edges under control a little bit better. Um, and I actually like how that's looking today. It's depending on the material that you're running through here, this isn't always my ideal setup, but I think today for what we're doing, I'm gonna go ahead and leave it like that. 
because there's so much information available online about that gun and you've got so many forum posts about guys saying oh set it up this way oh i do this oh i do this oh i've been using this gun since i was five years old and blah 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 um it can be a little bit confusing if you're a first timer with that gun um how to set it up or what to do um it also works at such a wide variety of pressures that it can also be a little bit overwhelming if you're not really sure you know what's going to best suit your application and what you're doing um, i'll use that gun as low as 13 psi all the way up to 27 psi just depending on what i'm doing and what i'm spraying so i guess in terms of ease of use the smaller fan and the potentially uh kind of abstract setup kind of makes it a little bit more difficult to use. I guess now that we got the bad part out of the way, which is kind of my only gripe with the gun, I will say that this gun is my workhorse. Uh, I spray multiple times a week. I'm definitely not like a production painter. So I don't spray multiple cars every single day. But I will say that nine and a half times out of ten when I'm going to do a job, I just reach for this gun. Um, and that's mostly because it's just so versatile. It does such a good job at spraying anything that you can throw at it. Like you can see, it lays down that sealer real nice and flat. It doesn't pile it on there uh, too wet or anything by any means. You get it on real nice and even. Gotta shoot some base out of this thing now. For a solid color, I'll go ahead and kick it down to about 13, 14 PSI. At the end of the day, if you only want to own one gun and you need it to perform like on a professional level with pretty much anything you put in the cup, then I'd say that this is a great choice. The caveat being that depending on your skill level, there's probably going to be a slight learning curve. Coming in at around 450 bucks, I'd say this gun's incredibly well priced and you can even find off-brand aluminum cups, like the one liter cups on Amazon for like 20 bucks. Are there guns that give you a more effortless application? Yes. Are there faster guns? Yes. But overall, I'd say it's a five out of five for value for your money, definitely. I'd say three out of five for easy use and a four out of five for finishing capabilities. Hope you all enjoyed the review. Uh, if you did, make sure to leave a like and follow the channel if you guys are interested in more automotive randomness, painting, mechanic stuff. Uh, we got all types of stuff going on over here.